afternoon, good afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. Um, you're all welcome to March edition of the RS Academy webinar. And the topic for today is business tax calculation, business tax calculation of tax, the process of remit and exemption. So um, we have a wonderful speaker today. Um, by name is Lua Toyin Rosemary Arinde. So um, just a short biography about the speaker today. Ms. Lua Toyin is the CEO of CZ Concepts, an accounting solution and tax professional firm registered in Nigeria. With about 20 years of professional practice, she is also the immediate past coordinator of Society of Women in Taxation, Oyo State, Nigeria chapter. She has been a consultant to blue chip organizations in Africa, writing accounting, software deployment, training, outsourcing, and task consultancy for almost two decades. Due to her passion for learning, she's currently taking a course of national technology at the University of UK. So um, we are welcome, man. It's a great pleasure to have you join us and have you with us this wonderful afternoon. Good afternoon, Ma, and you have the floor. You can start. Thank you, Ma. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Farmer Yodari. I'm happy to be on this platform this afternoon. And um, it's been a worthwhile uh, edition of um, um, RSO webinar. And um, nice previous editions that we had before. And I'm happy to be called again to discuss with people and also share my experience, at least the little ones I have on taxation with them. And um, the topic given to me this afternoon which is on business and tax. He said that she will talk on calculation of tax, the process of um, remittances and the exemptions of taxation as it relates with the pharmacy business. Without taking uh, much of your time, I think we have to just um, go into the business of the day. Um, the objective of today's discussion is to look at um, taxation, different taxes as relates with uh, pharmacy business in respect of um, the three tiers of governments in Nigeria, um, looking at it from the taxes that are being administered and that are due to federal government, the state government, and to the local government. So we are also going to talk about how those taxes are calculated and look at um, what are the compliance obligations from the angle of um, pharmacist. And to let you know, the relevant dates of your remittances and what is required from you. And also I will have to talk a little bit about uh, non-compliance to the tax laws of Nigeria. So if anything happens, maybe in a situation where you did not comply on time or in a situation where somebody did not pay the correct tax at the due date, what are the legal actions that can be taken against them, such people? We'll talk about that. Now, looking at um, taxation. Taxation is a wonderful fiscal tool that is being used by all governments all over the world. Nigeria is not an exception. Now, UK, where I am presently, the major source of their revenue is through taxation. So they can go to any extent to make sure that people pay their taxes 
correctly and as at when due. And failure to do that, they don't joke about it at all. So that's why Nigeria also has brazed up to using taxation as a means of getting revenue for the government. In the olden days, when the um, revenue from the high section was, you know, booming, government was able to get so much money from the oil sector. But we can see that recently, even the prices of um, barrel of oil at the international market has really gone down. So government is getting little or nothing from the oil sector. That is why they are looking inwards to enhance their own internally generated um, income through the use of taxation. And money gotten from taxation, as I said, used to be the main source of income for Nigerian government as at today. So whatever money they were able to get from taxation, they used them to do their own business. What do I mean by the business of the government? Government has to pay some capital expenditures. There are some things that government needs to do for the citizens. For example, creation of construction of roads at both state and federal level, which are called capital expenditure. Then they have some recurrent expenditures. They pay salaries of their staffs. They pay the retirement and the pension funds, which are being paid on daily basis, or, or sorry, on monthly basis. Also, government also use taxation to discourage the consumption of some harmful products like um, products uh, in the form of cigarettes, alcohol, and um, we called that kind of um, taxation that the two that government used as regressive tasks, because that task does not have um, respect on the personality of the people paying. Once you consume such products, you have to pay. So, High income earners, low income earners, they pay the same kind of taxation, which are regressive, but mostly used to discourage consumption of some harmful products. So government also use um, money gotten from taxation to provide social infrastructures like hospitals, to construct um, um, schools, establishment of schools, you know, um, amusement parks, and so on and so forth. Then they use taxation also to reduce the gap between the wealthy and the poor. They use it to close the gap in between. That's why in some developed nations, the more your income, the more taxes you are bound to pay. We call that kind of tax, progressive tax, which takes higher taxation from higher income earners and little or nothing from low income earners. So governments can use taxation for different tools or for different things in the, their country, just to mention few. Now, we just have to look at some terminologies before we proceed. One, tax. What is tax? 
Tax is a compulsory list. Let's look at the word compulsory. It's not something that if I like, I will pay. Or if I don't like, I will not pay. Or whatever I can afford is what I can pay. No, it is a compulsory levy on taxable persons. Taxable persons here might be an individual. It might be a corporation. Then taxable person might be an adult. It might be a child. But as long as that person earns income, the person is bound to pay. So the income might be from different sources. A child that inherited some properties, whenever dividend is being paid on such properties, or whenever such profits were being sold, whatever profit that is being made on it, such child has to pay. So that's why I just put it on taxable persons. Then tax rate, tax rate varies. It depends on the type of the taxes. As we proceed, you will see different rates for different um, taxes. But is your tax rate that will make you to know the tax that is due for payment, which we call tax liability at times. We can call it tax due or tax liability or your tax obligation. Then your tax base. The tax base is the platform on which your tax rate is being applied upon. For a company, a limited liability company, for example, their tax base is their net profit. For somebody who sold an, a, an asset, the tax base is the net gain on such sales. You are still going to see how such taxes were calculated as we move on. Then your tax liability, which I've talked about the other time, is the amount of money you are owing to the government. So. Your, your, your liability might be to the federal government, it might be to the state government, it might be to the local government. So your liability for any particular tax depends on the level of government that is in charge of that uh, taxation. Then taxable persons, which I've said, talked about the other time, irrespective of the age or the sex of the person. Once, as long as you earn income, you are bound to pay tax on it. Then we still have to look at some terminology. Tax authorities. Tax authorities, as I said the other time, might be the federal government, might be the state government, or might be the local government. Whosoever you are paying such taxes to is the authority in charge of that uh, tax. So. There is something called tax avoidance. Tax avoidance is a legal measure that is being taken by taxpayer to reduce their tax liability. Tax avoidance, most times, are those loopholes in the tax uh, laws, which your consultant will look at when they are doing your tax plan for a particular period of time or for the year. They will look at, okay, what are the loopholes in the tax laws that we can use legally in order to reduce whatever we are supposed to pay? So that's why I do advise people to at least have tax consultants or to ask questions about those people that knows about taxation so that you'll be able to manage your taxes. Then another term is tax evasion. Tax evasion is a deliberate attempt by individual or company to avoid paying taxes or to reduce the tax liability. It is a legal, it is an illegal, it is illegal mayor being taken by a tax payer 
And as you can see here, I've already put the sign that it is punishable under the law. In some countries, people might be jailed for it. And I think that um, with various measures that is being taken up in Nigeria now, Nigeria is moving towards where they can take legal, stringent legal actions against tax uh, violators. So that's why I really appreciate RSO for, for this opportunity because it will make it easier for pharmacists to know what to do before they run foul of the law. In Nigeria now, the Federal Land Revenue, they have a, 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 a platform that they call Tax Promax. That's the platform whereby you do your tax um, things, tax um, solutions, anything you want to do in respect of your taxes. You do it at the comfort of your home or your office. Gone are the days when people will go and queue at the tax office to do their returns or to make their payments. No, you don't even need to know or to see or to visit any of the tax offices before you do your tax uh, obligation, before you comply. So through the tax promise is a 24 hour unrestricted platform whereby you can just go in, you do your compliance, you make payments, you do your assessment and everything and life continues. So since when they came up with this tax promise, some researchers have been able to see that the automation of taxation in Nigeria has been beneficial to both the taxpayers and the government. As I said, it's brought about the ease of doing tax matters. It has also reduced the level of corruption when it comes to tax EUs. Then it has really increased the income of the government. So more people are coming to the ta tax net, it's easier for them to do their tax compliance without the stress that they normally experience in the past, which has really impacted positively in the revenue generation of the government. And in order to support that, federal government um, in their uh, publication made it known to us that in the year 2022, they were able to make 10.1 trillion as revenue from taxation. So, and from that, the non oil sector, the oil sector was able to just contribute only 4.9, whereas the non oil sector, we are companies like uh, the pharmacy business and like my company, Sincere Concept, belongs to, they made 5.96 trillion from that, which has really increased even in 2023, they made far more than that. So what are those things that you can do through the tax promise? You can do your self-assessment. What is self-assessment? Self-assessment is a situation whereby the federal government says, okay, look at what you did during the year, pay what you feel is the right tax. Assess yourself. Be your own judge in this tax situation. So some forms will be given to you through the tax promise. You fill it. You will declare your income. This is the income I made during the year. This is the expenses. You know, from it, they will be able to tell you, okay, these are the things that were allowed. They cost some expenses, allowable expenses, while some are not allowed. So those are the things that your tax consultant will have even helped you to plan. Those are part of the loopholes 
I was talking about when I talked about tax evasion, the, the, the tax uh, evasion that you use a legal means to reduce your tax. So, for example, donations to some charitable organizations that are registered, they are liable expenses. Or some expenses like um, some personal expenses, domestic expenses, maybe um, you pay, you did barrier, you pay the money from the company business, and so, some expenses like that are not allowed. So those ones will be added back to your uh, net profit at the end of the day, and government will ask you to pay tax on it. But the ones that are liable, they will allow you not to pay anything on it. But however, despite the fact that it is self-assessment, Government might still come at any time and say, okay, what you declared on our platform, give us the documents to justify what you declared. And most of, most of the documents they will ask for are your bank statements. They want to see your bank statements. They want to see your invoices, purchase invoice and sales invoices. That's why it is good that from the onset, try and keep proper records. Make sure you keep your source documents well, because a day will come when the federal inland revenue people or state government might ask you to come and open your books so that they can see some of those uh, transactions. So they call it desk review or tax audit, just to validate what you have uh, declared to them. So on the tax promise, you can file your VAT, you can file and make payments also for your uh, company income tax, withholding taxes, personal income tax payee. You will know some of those things as we proceed. Then from the, 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 the tax promise also, you can apply for your tax clearance. As a limited liability company, you don't need to just go to their office anymore. Just apply for your clearance. And once you have fulfilled the necessary obligations, your clearance will be given to you. You do the printout. Then you can also request for your statement, your tax statement from the tax promise. The normal way you request for your bank statement, you can request for your tax statement. But as good as the platform, might be, there might be some um, problems with the platform, which is still going, undergoing some development. So at times there might be network breakdowns. So that's why I normally encourage uh, taxpayers to do their returns before the due date. So you will still see some of those taxes when you are expected to do the returns, Failure to do that when it becomes an offense, you will still know about them later. So, but if you do your returns, if you try to do your returns before the due period, you might not experience or you might not be negatively impacted as a result of their network uh, problem. Then at times, the, plate, uh, the, uh, the payment platform might misbehave. The uh, payment platform is called Remita, which is the platform that government uses. And at times due to the volume or the traffic on that platform, it's my malfunction. So once that one is out of it, just uh, some few occasions, it's used to be part of their problem. Then the cost of doing the remittance, you know, you have to do it through the use of your internet. So once you don't have internet, it might be difficult. And since they are no longer taking anything manually from their office, but by the time you look at the cost of doing the internet and the cost of going to their office to get your transactions done, you still discover that the cost of the internet is still cheaper. Now we are getting to the business of the day, calculation of tax, company income tax, I believe that um, some of the people I'm talking to, most of them might have um, registered their company as 
either a limited liability company or a business enterprise. And uh, if otherwise, I always encourage people to sit down and look at it very well before you choose the type of uh, business uh, registration you want to do. Most people, because other people are uh, registering limited liability companies, they too, they say, oh, I want to register a limited liability company. No knowing these statutory obligations that comes with the limited liability company. Although it has some of um, uh, advantage, it has some advantages because some things that you can do with limited liability company might not be possible if the business is uh, an enterprise. But if the business is an enterprise, you have very little statutory obligations to comply with. So it's only limited liability companies that is um, supposed to pay company income tax and they pay it on their net profit. After the allowable expenses has been taken off, you can see that where uh, what is coming up again, I've already talked about allowable expenses and the salable expenses. Your allowable expenses might be the salaries that you pay to your staff, the rent of where you do your business, you know, you pay for electricity, the, the cost of purchase of those items you are selling, and so on and so forth. But the disallowable expenses are those expenses, like um, payment of uh, school fees of your children, that has to be paid from your salary, not from the company. It's going to be disallowed. Government will add it back to your net profit and ask you to pay tax on it. Then, so after all the expenses that are allowed has been taken, whatever is left, some, there is a particular um, rate that will be applied on it. The net profit becomes your tax base on which we are going to use some rates to now calculate what you are expected to pay. But you know, after COVID-19, government came up as part of the palliatives given to citizens, they decided to reduce some of those rates and also giving, give some incentives to some companies. In the past, irrespective of the turnover of the organization, the size or the nature of business, 30% has to be paid to the government as company income tax on the net profit for the year. But from COVID period, any organization whose turnover is less than 25 million is not expected to pay anything as company income tax. So it forms part of the exemptions when we get there. Then a company whose income is between 25 million and 100 million we pay only 25% as company income tax on the net profit. And the big companies, which we normally call large organization, once your income, your net profit is more than 100 million. Net profit this time around is, net, is more than 100 million. You are to pay 30% of your uh, profit to the government. And this company income tax is being administered by the Federal Enlarged Revenue Service. So the money is being paid to the federal government. So it forms part of the 10.1 billion uh, trillion Naira that the government reported during the introduction. Then another part, another type of tax is value-added tax. This tax, irrespective of the nature of registration of that business, be it limited or enterprise, once the person is selling or producing vatable items, such organization is bound to pay VAT. Good enough in the case of uh, pharmacy industry, 
Drugs are not vertigo. But there are still some products that some pharmacy business do sell that are vertigo. So provisions are vertigo, drugs are not vertigo. Although some pharmacy business do use that as a loophole to reduce their tax liability and say, oh, what we sell here is drugs. So we are not bound to pay VAT. Fine, if you are not paying VAT, the law still expects you to make your VAT returns on monthly basis. You make your VAT returns, you tell the government, this is my sales for the... Not that um, it's not the organization that is paying the VAT. The organization is just a collecting agent. It is your customers that are expected to pay. You build that VAT on your sales, on your sales, the, the, your selling price. But failure to do that, if such items are vatable, becomes an offense, which the organization will not have to bear. So VAT is being administered by the Federal Inland Revenue Service. Then another form of um, tax that um, pharmacy business also might be liable to pay is called capital gains tax. Capital gains tax are just taxes on the profit from any asset of the organization that is sold. <coughs> Sorry, please. <clears throat> if any asset, for example, motor vehicle that belongs to the business is being sold, the cost of purchase, initial purchase will be taken off from the sales proceed. Then any handling cost in order to facilitate that sales also has to be taken. Whatever is left as the profit, 10% out of it has to be paid as capital gains tax, which is administered to by the Federal Inland Revenue if such organization is limited liability company. But if the business is an enterprise or an individual, the money will be paid to the state government. So in that situation, the state government will do the administration. Then the one that is very, very um, common to all forms of business is called personal income tax, which people call pay, pay as you earn. The payments of such tax is a function of your um, salary. This one also is not to be paid by the government, by the organization. The organization is a collecting agent. The money is to be paid, the tax is to be paid by the staff. But in a situation whereby the organization fails to deduct such money from the staff salary, the organization will be penalized for it. Or a situation whereby the organization don't do the deduction but fails to remit, the organization has to be penalized for it. Any staff that is any below the minimum wage of 30,000 per annum, per month, sorry, is expected to pay just 1% of his salary as tax. So that one is called minimum wage tax. But any staff whose salary is more than that, there is a table for the calculation. The calculation is such person is entitled to, to a consolidated relief, which is called consolidated relief allowance. And it's been calculated 
at 20% of the gross income of such staff, whatever the 20% is, 200,000 is added to it. So the total is deducted from the gross annual pay of that, organize, of that staff for the year. So the next will now be subjected to the task table rates, which is stated here. So whatever is the net, the first 300,000 of that net will attract 7% tax. The next 300 of the net will attract 11% tax. If the salary is so big that you see have an extra 500,000 is going to be subjected to 15%. Then another 500,000, we attract 19% rate and so on and so forth. So if the net is above 3.2 million, such person will pay 24%. So the, the, the total now, the total task calculated now, we be divided into payment on monthly basis which such person we pay. Payee is being administered by the state internal revenue. So the remittance is made to the state internal revenue and is the state internal revenue that can do the desk review or the audit of such taxes. Using residency rule. Let me talk a bit on residency rule. What residency rule is talking about is that such taxes will be paid to the government of where that person works. So that's why in uh, uh, um, Lagos State, for example, you see people living at uh, maybe Ajumo or Akute, working in VI. Their tax will be paid to VI. The money will be used by the VI uh, this thing. And Akuti Ajuwa uh, is believed to fall under Ogun State. Nothing will go there. But in Oyo State, we might not have such problem. So the, the tax, the payee of our staff will be paid to Oyo State Internal Revenue um, Government. Another form of tax is called returning tax. This type of tax is applicable mostly to a limited liability company. It's just payment of your tax in advance. The government is helping you to say, okay, we don't want you to feel the burden so much at the end of the year. Pay part of your company income tax in advance. So whatever is left, you pay at the end of the year. So it's a tax that is being taken as source. Payee also is taken as source from the salary. So with only tax is taken as source. So there are some, there might be some situation where as a pharmacy, you render some services to maybe some organizations, such with only tax will be taken from your money. The net will be paid to you, but you are expected to request for your with only tax credits from such organization that will tell part of your money because it's going to be used by you at the end of the year to reduce your tax liabilities. So, and that withholding tax is not only taking on some services. If you have rent, you are supposed, or the rent being paid to your landlords, supposed to be subjected to withholding tax. But you know the kind of peculiarity we have in New York State, the landlord will not accept. So most times it's the uh, taxpayer that will still pay the withholding tax because when government comes to look at your books, they don't want to know whether the landlord agrees or not. You pay the rent of 300,000, where is the 10% of it as a withholding tax you have to pay. Then on dividend, it's been taken as source. 
So whatever dividend is that is being paid to you or the interest on your savings, bank savings, withholding tax has been taken. So you are only giving the net and so on and so forth. So another one is education tax, which is the 2% of your annual accessible profit. It's taken from your profit and it's mostly paid by limited liability company just to support the education sector. So that's where they get the money for ETF, the money for uh, this university, uh, Texcom, and so on and so forth. That's where they get such money. So it's also been administered by the Federal Inland Revenue. Petroleum profit tax, that one is not applicable to you. So for our time, I will just leave that. Then the Land Use Act, I know you must have heard about that severally. Pharmacists also, they are to pay Land Use Act. Whether the property where you are doing your business belongs to you, it is paid on the value of that property. Or if it is a rented apartment, it has to be paid. It's been administered by the state internal revenue. That's why you see people, you know, even RSO to do pay. It is paid annually. The uh, state people will bring the invoice to you. So when you see them, it's part of what you are supposed to pay. But at times, the amounts being given to you might look somehow outrageous. So there might be need for discussion with them. But it's something that you have to pay. Then stamp duties is paid mainly on contracts. So at times, you might have, as a pharmacy, you might have contracts with another company. You pay stamp duty on the contract. And you know, the every deposit in the bank. Now that's why you see whenever you make any deposit, they take 50-50 naira out of it is stamp duty. So everybody has to pay. Once the deposit is above 10,000 naira, it's been paid to the federal land revenue. So the pension contributions, you are supposed to make your some contribution to the um, government in respect of your staff. So, and there is a, 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 a percentage on it, a percentage that the company has to pay, the percentage that you have to take from the salary of your staff. So that one also, whenever um, the time comes, it can be discussed with your task consultant. So let's quickly look at the remittance, task remittance. Personal income tax. Remember I said it has to be taken from the salary of your staff, but you have to make the remittance, the payment and the remittance to the government or no before the 10th of the subsequent months. Then at the end of the year, before 31st of January of the new year, you have to make the annual returns to state in that revenue. Failure to do that attracts 500,000 Naira. So please don't run foul of that. Then company income tax. As a limited liability company, your company's audit, annual audit has to be done and your remittance, your returns be made to the government or not before the 30th June of the subsequent year. Failure to do that also attracts penalty of 75,000 for the first month. VAT, your VAT remittance is on or before the 21st of the subsequent month. So in February now, your February transaction by March 21, latest, you have to do your returns. Remember I said tax promise might have some issues. So it's better you start doing your returns as from the 10th so that you won't have problem of network uh, issue. The same thing with your withholding tax. You know, we talked about withholding tax the other time. On or before the 21st of the subsequent month, you have to do that. Then education tax. As you are doing the remittance for your company income tax, it goes along with your education tax. So the two is done together. Then your capital gains tax, not later than the 10th, the, the 30th June of the following year when such sales 
was made. So what are the exemptions? The exemptions are one, for your company income tax for a limited liability company, you can approach the Federal Inland Revenue that you want to pay your tax on instrumental basis. So that's part of the tax planning that I talked about the other time. Okay, I want to pay on two installments, three or four. But the most important thing is once you have made an agreement with them, you must make sure you pay as at agreed. Then another exemption is the 25 million Naira uh, exemption from uh, common income tax that I talked about the other time as a result of palliative of COVID-19. So if your turnover is less than 25,000 in the year, you are not expected to pay company income tax. You only make returns to the government. You just do your remittance. You submit your uh, auditor report to them, do the normal documentation, you won't pay anything. And also, you will not be expected to pay VAT if your turnover is less than 25 million naira. But you only be, you only need to do the returns of your VAT on monthly basis. Then you might be given some tax holidays. If your business is uh, in some uh, trailed uh, section, maybe glass uh, manufacturing organization or those organizations that are manufacturing uh, fertilizers, steel, and some other things, those sections that government is trying to encourage. So if your business is in such sector, it forms uh, an exemption, such will not pay, but for a pharmacy, you are not under such an exemption. Then interest on money borrowed, interest on loan, you are not going to pay tax on it, is an allowable expense. So the money borrowed to do business, for the normal business, you are not going to pay tax on it. So they will allow you the total money, the total interest will be taken from your net profits before they arrive at whatever you have to pay. Then um, repairs, you know, some of those, uh, some of your allowable expenses like repairs, rent, which I've talked about the other time, those ones are allowed. Then subscription of your profession, pharmacy, uh, license is an allowable expense because that's the main instrument for your business. So whatever subscription you pay to renew your license on yearly basis, the government allows you to take everything off your profit before they tax whatever is being left. The minimum income tax, which I talked about the other time, for people any income less than one percent, uh, less than the minimum wage, they only pay. 1%. Then whatever pension contribution that the organization pays on behalf of the staff is an allowable expense. You won't pay tax on it. It's going to be taken off from your net profit before your tax calculation is done. And also, it's going to be allowed for the staff too. They will take it off a salary before they calculate the uh, net tax payable. So another exemption, uh, all pharmaceutical products are not vatable. You are not supposed to pay VAT on those things that you are selling your drugs. They are not vatable, but you only make returns. Then basic foods, some uh, educational materials and so on and so forth, they are not vatable. So not to take your time on that. Then the conclusion is that, um, as I said the other time, that all the nations of the world, their government is really taking uh, taxation as a very important tool for internally generated income. So Nigeria also is really taking tax drive serious. So please, I want to encourage that pharmacists also needs to do what is right from the onset in order to avoid unnecessary penalties and liabilities. Taxation is compulsory 
as a levy for every citizen. So in order for us to make a nation also, to be like other nations of the world, we need to pay a tax. Thank you very much. Farm, are you there? Hello? Hello, fam? Hello? Oh, thank you very much, ma. Thank you very much, ma. Hello, hello. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. Can you hear me, ma? Okay. Hello, thank you very much, ma. It's yeah, been welcome. a wonderful session. It's been a very great session. Thank you very much, ma. Learned a lot. My daughter is quite full. I was jotting some things uh, like it's been an impossible session. Thank you very much, ma. Sessions. And then any questions, just raise your hand. We have a comment in the chat from Mr. Mohammed Kiari. Thank you indeed to the educative session. Thank you also, Mr. Mohammed, for joining. We also have another comment from Mr. Abbe, very educative. Thanks a lot. Thank you also for joining. Do you have any questions from anybody on call? Do you have any question? Yeah, Ma, I think you did a very wonderful job that everybody quite understood what you said. And there are no questions, you just have comments. Uh, thank you for the wonderful educative session that you just delivered to us. So thank you very much, Ma. We really appreciate no, you all our invites. It's thank been you. a great session I've been around. And to everyone that joined, thank you very much for joining and participating in this month's webinar. We have another coming up in April. So we hope to see you also there. I would hope to see you join us also. Thank you very much and good afternoon once again. Do enjoy the rest of the weekend and your day. Bye for now. Thank bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm.